Hi, my name is Raylani, and I'm going to be talking about honeybee dances and urban foraging. So there are approximately 20,000 species of bees on planet Earth, and honeybees is just one. But they're a highly, highly social and organized species. They exhibit social organization that allows you to look at a hive as an individual organism and each individual bee as a worker to facilitate the perpetuation of the hive as a whole. So as they relate to humans, bees are predominantly important for their role in po pollination. Approximately one third of all the food that we eat was pollinated by a bee. This includes fruits, vegetables, nuts, and crops like alfalfa, which are used for feeding livestock. So this summer, I worked with the bees at the AP area on South Campus, and my group asked a really simple question. We wanted to know where the bees were foraging in an urban landscape. So to do this, we turned to the bee dances. So bees use dances to communicate the location of food sources. And there are several different types of dances, but we use the waggle dance. And so the bees will go forage, come back home to their hive, and then perform a waggle dance on the surface of the comb for the other bees. So the waggle dance has two parts. It's the straight run and a round run. So this is the straight run, and the straight run tells you everything you need to know about where the food is. The duration of the waggle during the straight run tells you how far away the, su the source is, and then the angle relative to the angle of the sun tells you the angle away from the hive that the bee is going. So we used an observation hive, which is a beehive that looks like this. So instead of the frames being stacked next to each other, they're stacked on top of each other. And one side is glass, so you can watch the bees. And then all we needed was a dry erase marker, a protractor, and a stopwatch. And then we could record all these bee dances and get a raw data set. So our raw data set consisted of the day of the year, the time of day, the length of the dance, and the angle. So we put it in Excel, and from there, we could drive the physical distance and physical angle. So it's approximately one second of waggling is one kilometer away. And then we use an online tool that takes your area in the world and then the time of year and the time of day and tells you the angle of the sun. And from there, we converted everything into latitude and longitude and created this map. So this is approximately 200 bees dances. And the most interesting thing I thought about this map was all the points on the water, which we kind of deduced were probably lily pads that were blooming at the time. So after we made this map, we wanted to confirm that our bees were actually going where we thought they were going. So we set up a series of seven feeders that look like this, that are just sugar water in the, the areas of highest concentration. And then we would mark the bees with a paint marker. No bees were injured during this experiment. And then we go back to our observation hive and watch and see if, our, or if the marked bees were the ones on our comb. And we saw one bee. We would have liked to see more, but there weren't any. So if we were to do this all again, we would do a number of things to kind of improve the accuracy of our, both our experimental design and our map. So this study was done over a really short period of time. And if you wanted to know more things about the bees, you'd have to control for things like weather and seasonality and disturbances. But the bee dance is a really well-documented and studied entity of bee behavior. The guy who decoded it actually won the Nobel Prize. And it's been, or we've been able to use bee dances and bee mapping to kind of tell a lot of changes in bee populations over time, also populations and foraging behavior changing seasonally and in response to a disturbance. So we ran into a series of problems while we were doing this. And um, one of the things we would do better next time is streamline all of our conversions from raw data into GIS. And that just was kind of like a, we learned it as we went. But GIS is a super powerful tool for being able to tell in the future kind of different kind of community dynamics of what happens in an urban landscape, like if you have new developments, if you're um, annexing off habitat patchways or things like that that bees use to forage. So, and that is basically all. Thank you.